Thank you for staying with us. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And right now we're going to be talking about the types of investments to make in 2024. We have a guest here, Donatus Onoja. He's an investment banker and also the fellow of, Inst of the Institute Chartered Accountants of Nigeria. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning and thank you for having me. Yes. So investing in 2024, I want to believe it's paramount. Like it's essential for everybody to start to think of how they grow their monies because that's what we talked about the last time you were here, growing, um, how to make your money grow for you. So, but today we want to take a, a deep dive into it. We've, we know how important it is growing your money is because if you have different goals, maybe you want to um, buy a new car or have, buy a new house or go on vacation, you need monies for all of these things. But the little money that you get from your salary or even your side business might not be enough. But when you start to invest them, um, you get returns which would help you um, fulfill all of these goals and needs that you have. But now we're looking at the types of investments to make in 2024. So we just want um, a, a brief overview of the types of investments, then we start to dig deeper into each of them. So what are the types of investments we can start to put in our monies in 2024? Okay. Thank you very much for the question. Now, in talking about um, the types of investment, especially um, dealing with financial assets, before you even dive into the type of asset, the first thing that is very important is to look at some important variables. The variables include what is my investment objective? What am I setting out to achieve with this investment, right? Having answered that, the second question you have to ask, answer is that um, what is my risk profile? Mm -hmm. So what risk, what's my risk profile, what's my risk tolerance level, what's my risk appetite like? Because in the investment environment, the higher the risk, the higher the return. So mm -hmm. you have to also look at how tolerant are you when it comes to risk. Then the other third question that is also very important is the fact that what time horizon are you looking at? Are you looking at short term? Are you looking at a medium term or a longer term? So having answered these three important questions, they will now say, okay, having answered what are the investments that I can go into. So looking at financial assets um, broadly, the first on the list, of course, is equities. So equities has to do with stock, and we have NGX there, where we see all the activity that is happening there. And thankfully, from last year up to this point, equities are doing very well. So that's the first side, buying into ownership of a company. So either you call it equities or you call it stock. Mm. That's the first one. Then the second one is um, fixed income. Now for fixed income, you are not buying into ownership of a company, or rather you are investing in a, an investment vehicle that can fetch you interest. So, and that bucket is quite large. So you have your mutual funds there, you have your commercial papers, you have your treasury bills, and, you know, and as well as bonds. So anything that gives you interest fall under the fixed income and it's a very big uh, bucket. So having spoken about um, the stock, the, that is equities, the fixed income, then we can also look at the, another option that is very available is um, currency trading. Mm -hmm. and of course, the risk there is very high. Mm -hmm. and you need to understand that as well. Then you have your um, cryptocurrency, crypto as well, or digital currency, as the case may be. So generally, then of course you have the real estate. There's a reason why it is called real. So that is not a financial instrument, but it's also another investment class that you can look at, considering how much you have at the moment. But broadly, it's your equities, your uh, fixed income, your currency, then uh, maybe digital asset and the likes. Let, let, let's start with um, digital assets because um, to, some, to a lot of people it's still a new terrain and especially the government of Nigeria, it doesn't seem as if it has embraced it that much. So where are we in digital currency mining or whatever you call it, um, the laws that govern them? Because if you talk about it, a lot of people will say it is not legal in Nigeria. So how are we, where are we in that regard? Okay, thankfully there have been um, a couple of development in that space. Number one, in 2023, um, SEC brought out a framework, a regulation concerning 
um, how you have you can treat deal and trade in um, your scriptos, right? Um, earlier in the year too, we are still in January. Central bank also have come out to say yes, you can. It is now legal. Mm -hmm. That is the direction the world is going to, and we are happy to also key in. So a policy, a circular was released, and government have clearly stated how that, how those that are willing to play, what they must do, and then for the uh, banks as well, there is also a regulation on how they can onboard, how they can also deal with that that space as well. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, come February 27th or thereabout, Central Bank, in partnership with other stakeholders, will be launching our own digital um, digital asset. So we've gone. Have we done that already? No, 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 no. The launching is happening sometimes in February. If I'm not mistaken, February 24 or 27. Mm. Oh. All right. Okay. Well, um, so it seems we're talking about digital. Are there like? technological innovations or things that can influence your investment decision right now in 2024 so are there any any tech thing you know emerging at the moment that would influence your decision to say okay this is what i should be investing in this is not what i should be investing in so for that space right it's highly technical right and it, you can't just come in and say you want to put in your money. Mm. So first, you don't understand it, or you're talking to an investor or um, an expert, mm. you know, an asset manager that is very comfortable in that space, and they is able to advise you that, look, these are the currencies that are coming up. You can buy them. That over time, we expect that this will grow, you know, or don't go this direction, go. It is... Some call it speculative asset. Today, you know, your Bitcoin and the likes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And hear that it is now 20000 it is now $30,000. Keep growing, right? But there are other smaller ones that the values are very small at the moment. So for those that understand the space, they can advise you that buy. We expect that it to grow over time. But it's something that you have to take your time, understand the market, and talk to those that are playing in that sector so that you are guided at, um, you are properly guided. Because okay. I must tell you that that space is very volatile. If you don't have the knowledge, you shouldn't play in that space. All right. So since you talked about um, even Bitcoin or whatever going up, let's talk about inflation. As of right now, inflation is about 28.92%, right? So does that affect your investment? Um, maybe I've invested X amount today, and because of the inflation, I don't even get as much as I have invested today. Um, you see people even buying properties um, because now we, we really play with FX. So you're probably bu buying a property, let's say, for X amount of dollars, right? But by the time you even want to sell or do something with that property, by the time you sell it, it might not even equal to that same amount of dollars that you had bought it in the, in the past with. So does that affect your investment? Does inflation um, affect your investment? And what are, like, the what's the interest rate like? Does it cover up for inflation? Okay. Now, in talking about inflation, uh, unlike what happens in the developed world, you know, the China of this world, the United Kingdom, the EU, as well as um, um, the United States, which happens to be the largest economy in the world, we've seen inflation rise as high as 10% and are currently is decelerating, coming down very low, 3%, 4%. But that has not happened in Nigeria, right, because of some structural issues and the rest of them. Like you rightly said, inflation today is 29.92%. Um, that is even for the headline inflation. If you touch the food inflation, mm -hmm. you're talking about 33%. 30, yeah. So, and that is what is driving investors to areas where they can get return that is ab above that inflation rate. Now, if you have investment, what you ask yourself is, what is the return that I'm getting? Um, for equities, equities did as much as 39%, 40%. There are some sectors you will touch that, in fact, was above 50% or 60%. Mm -hmm. That, of course, is already above the inflation rate. But there is. But the risk. Of course, mm -hmm. absolutely. So if you want to invest and the objective is to do something that is above inflation, that means you have to look for asset classes whose return are is above. above. Mm. Yes. So by the time you do that, you know that, okay, you have really frog um, the inflation, and then your real rate of return is positive. If it's anything less than the inflation rate, 
at the end of the day, your real rate of return is negative if it's not up to inflation rate. So that is also driving, maybe that's part of what is driving the activity we're seeing in the, in the NGX, that is in the equity side, because investors want to make more money. And yeah. of course, investors are also looking at some other asset class, aside the Naira. So if you say, look, if last year, um, before you know, the new government came in, I, had, I needed um, $1,000, so about 400,000, mm -hmm. then about we give you that $1,000. Yeah. Today, you need 1.2 million Naira. So, <laughs> so if you are holding mm -hmm. Naira, right, if you are not careful. So I have a, an, a, a client of mine that was we were discussing and I said, look, whatever you give me today, if I convert it, there's no amount of interest that can give me, right. you know, what um, I'm supposed, what I've lost in terms of... Um, um, the exchange rate. So what we are praying, and of course the government is working very hard to see that Naira find its real value and the value of our currency keep um, improving so that you don't lose value. But it's a risk and that is why you have to look at what is the objective and what are the investment options available in the market today that can help you leapfrog inflation and also take care of um, your um, foreign, uh, your FX rigs as, as, it, as that. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Let's look at the buckets, the various buckets. You started out with, um, with equities, yes. which is buying a part of the company, as it were. Buying to ownership. Uh, yes, ownership of a company. I like that. I would like <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when, we, when we start, I, I'd like to look at uh, the entry point, how low or how high you must be before you can do this, and then the gestation period, uh, more or less. I'm using terms I don't know whether they are they're relevant to you, but yeah. how long it has to stay before you can get your returns. And then also the risk uh, of investing in this thing and how you can maneuver out of it. So tell us everything about these equities that we need to know before we go on to others. Okay. The first point, especially in equities, is if it is not your space, if you are not an expert, Please talk to an expert. Get an, a stock broker. Don't take um, the decision to invest on stock on your own if that is not your space. That's the first advice, right? Now, um, for you to invest in equities today, um, so first of all, you need a CSCS account because most investors, only like what we used to have in the past, is unless there's an IPO, for example, and you're interested in buying, not, when you buy, the register will issue you a share certificate. You'll have to so, be telling us what all these things mean. IPO. Because IPO, I know, is investigating police. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, a CSE is something that you <laughs> called earlier on. Let us know what okay. these things are. So the IPO is initial public offer. Okay. So if a company is going to the market to raise funds, so, and they want to do through an initial public offer, so they'll come to the market and say, come on, we have this in the market, come and buy, it's a good investment, okay. right? So in that circumstance, a certificate can be issued to you. But if you are here today and you've seen maybe a stock of a firm uh, or any of the sectors in the economy, you say, I'm interested in this stock. So normally, you have to have an account. Mm -hmm. You know, for you to have an account in bank, you need to go to the bank, open an account. Mm -hmm. But for stock now, you need to have a CSCS account for you to be able to buy and sell shares. What's a CSCS account? Central Security. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, Just something that you know secures exactly. your. So yeah. you, have, you, you have mm -hmm. to have an investment account, and mm -hmm. that account is with CSCS. Once you have your account, that means you can trade, you can buy stock. Mm -hmm. Your account will be credited whenever you want to sell, and you issue a sales mandate, and there's a buyer your stock position, which is your CSCS account, will be debited, and then money will be paid into your account. Mm -hmm. Now, for a lot of the... So you can't just come to Nigeria's exchange, for example, and say, I want to buy stock. stock. You have to go through your stock broker. Now, for a lot of these stock brokers, they have their minimum entry level. So on the average, a lot of them, with your 50,000, you can start, mm -hmm. right? So now, when you, st when you have your 50,000, and a CSCS account has been created for you, you now tell them, I'm ready, I want to buy this stock. Or you, they will ask, or you ask them, sorry, what stock will you advise me to buy? Then they say, okay, this stock that we can see in the market is undervalued at the moment. We mm -hmm. see good potential. Then they'll buy for you, and then you watch how 
the performance of the stock of or the equity involved goes. Yeah. However, um, a very important thing when you are buying shares, when you are investing in stock is, again, back to those questions. Number one, what is the objective? There are two ways you can gain when you invest in stock. One, you can gain dividend, right? So now we are in the um, earning environment. 2023 has come and gone. A lot of companies will start chalking out their financial performance mm, for 2023 and they'll start um, declaring dividend. Now, if you, are, if you are having any of those stocks that dividend is um, declared, it will be paid into your account. You will receive mm. dividend. For some, they'll say, look, I'm not looking at dividend. I'm looking at growth. So which stock do I think is undervalued currently or has potential for growth? Mm. That, okay, I will buy now, and then hopefully in the nearest future, it, can, it will appreciate and I will sell. So for example, if I have a million naira today, and I say, look, I want to buy a stock of this company, and they are selling at 10 naira. So if you divide 10 by 1 million, that means you have 100,000 units. So if you bought at 10 naira, let's say in January, and we move into June, and the stock is now 20 naira. That means your 1 million, if you multiply your 20 naira by your 100,000 units, that means you have 2, naira, two, two million, million naira. So that means your 1 naira that you invested has become grown. 2 million. And you now have gained, uh, what do you call it, 1 million naira. Mm -hmm. However, if the downside happened, mm. your money <laughs> it is was gone. 10 naira, <laughs> and it is now 5 naira, mm. that means the value of your investment today is 500,000. Mm. So you've taken a haircut of uh, 500,000. But you can decide to leave it there until it appreciates. Of course. Mm. So for stock, for stock, right, um, which we also call equities, it's not for a short term okay. investor. It's for medium to longer term. Yeah. Because all that volatility can come and go, but over time, you are able to uh, make your return and even grow your money. Again, but for some that are very safe, that's why talking to your first uh, stockbroker is very important. So if you are targeting, maybe you have a very a company that is paying good dividend, you can say, okay, ah, they've declared dividend, they are closing their book at so so point. So let me buy now, take advantage of, uh, of my dividend, of my return, and, and, and then at the later date, I'm able to sell. Yeah. There are some companies on NGX, you buy in Naira, but because of their global coverage, the dividend is paid in dollars. Mm. So you can look at that, invest oh. your money. That's and nice. Then I, like that. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I like that. Um, okay, so I want to go up tangent a little bit. Since we're talking about stocks and equity, can you buy stocks for someone? I mean, is it something that you can gift? Because sometimes you, you might want to you know, buy something for someone and you want something that can grow. So not just, oh, I'm buying you this phone or I'm buying you, you know, a gadget or a suit or a fashion item, but can you even start to invest on behalf of somebody? So even for your child as well, I want to buy stocks for my child because I know that, okay, in a couple of years, since we're seeing now that it's a long-term um, investment opportunity, I know in a couple of years it will grow to X you know, amount, or I want to give to my friend or to my partner, it's their birthday, their anniversary, um, a wedding present, and I buy stocks for you. Is that possible? Absolutely. So in the stock, not just stock, even in the fixed income side of things, your mutual fund, you can actually buy for a friend. Now, what happens for, if, especially when you, want, when you want to buy for a minor, you have to go through the process and open an, a, just the, the, CS, the CSCS, CSCS account, account for the minor. Then because the, the, it's a minor, um, a guardian will also be onboarded in the course of... Then you can now buy and sell, buy stock. A lot of people today are sitting on assets, in mm. financial asset that their parents mm -hmm. bought for them. Mm. So maybe the stock was even 50 kobo. Mm. Today it's 20 naira per share and the rest of them. So that is possible and there's procedure for that. You just follow the procedure and then the money you have, you invest for them and then you keep growing. And tomorrow they'll be happy that... My daddy, my mommy did this for me, and I'm sitting on some pretty good uh, money or asset. Yeah. All right. Okay, so we're talking about short-term and long-term now. Um, stocks is long-term. Yes. I want to know if the fixed income is short-term or long-term, and what are some considerations you should look at 
when you want to start to invest. So I want to do a, a short-term investment. I want to do a long-term investment. What are these considerations? And then for you as an expert, what are the things that you know you can get? Me, I'm, I'm bothered about the high returns. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what I want. So what are those um, investment buckets that I know that I can get the, the high returns from as well as, okay, short-term, long-term. So just give us that right now. But, but what was your definition of short or long-term for the, the stock? Um, so anything less than one year is regarded as, as short, term. short term. Yeah. So you so can do this stock for three months. So if you understand the market, can you do the stocks for three months? You can do for two months. Stocks. Yes. Okay. So for example, you have your CSCS account, right? And you've seen a company; the performance is good. For example, um, last year, after the uh, currency unification, right? Um, a lot of company had. Um, um, a lot of revaluation gain because they um, they have asset they are, they are sitting on asset that are in a dollar. So today the, those values are higher. In fact, even the, the regulator have come out to say you can declare those revaluation gain as dividend to your client. So a lot of those companies have done well. Some from now you start seeing result performance coming out. We've declared two hundred billion. We've declared hundred billion, mm. depending on the sector and how big your your firm is. Now, some of those companies will pay dividend. Some will come out to say, "Okay, we're going to pay three naira per share. We're going to pay five naira per share." So, if you see that information, and there's a closing date usually for the register that look, oh, this is our position. We are declaring dividend, and we are closing our books. We we'll use the register, let's say, as at January thirty first. For an investment savvy person, you can come and say, ah, let me go to the market. These guys have declared five naira. Closing date is January 31st. We are not in January 31st yet. So when we buy now, you are going to participate in that. Oh, dividend. nice. Oh, so if cool. you understand the market, you can look at But that's the reason why you need to speak to a stockbroker to assist you. That's to smart. Yeah, absolutely. That's really smart. Oh, absolutely. fantastic. Okay, so now back to my question. What are the factors? Um, you should look at, you should consider in this short term, because, I mean, we only just talked about equities now. So in the short term and the long term, what are the considerations and what is the high return? Because that is where I'm bothered. That's what high I want return. to know. I want to make money. <laughs> okay. So if you're looking at the um, high yield environment, of course, we are going to equities, right? But if you're looking for something that is um, within um, market average, that ensures that your principal preservation is guaranteed. If I have my house, for example, now, it's ready now. Where I work, they are happy to pay me now, January. But if it is not due till June, that money should not be put in equities. Mm. You are not sure. Your principal preservation is not guaranteed. So you should come into the fixed income space where you know that principal preservation is guaranteed. Then you look at, okay, from the asset class under the fixed income space, what are the options available? So for example, we've mentioned a CPs, that's commercial paper. Um, so you can see a company coming to the market asking for funds, and they want to pay 20% for 200 and 270 days or 180 days. You can look at it. The rate here is 70%, yeah. is 50%. It's higher than the average. I'm happy. I can't do that. You know? Uh, then uh, for you can look at the treasury bills too. Okay, what's the market expectation? Okay, how much can I make? What's the interest rate? So based on the asset class, even in the fixed income, they all have various um, interest rates because mm -hmm. they are interest bearing. So before you enter, you are seeing what the rates are. And then um, again, the mutual funds. Mutual fund. There are all kinds of mutual funds in the market. There are those that are equity based. Mm. There are those that are um, short term security based, like um, the one, the popular one that they call money market. The asset, the underlying asset class are your treasury bills, your commercial paper, and bank placement. So you know that your principal preservation is guaranteed. Yeah. You're not going to come in June, for example. When you are ready to pay, and your one number is now 700, or as yeah. this may be. So, if your investment objective is to earn something, but you want your principal to be guaranteed, then you, can, you have to come into the principal concept. However, if you have some good money, say, look, I want to earn some good return, 
I want to that's that's me. You're talking about me. Oh, so you have good money. <laughs> that's, that's the bucket I fall into. You, you have good Amen money. Amen to that. I have good money, and I, that's that's where I'm going to. <laughs> so you can buy. You can do some equities. You can mm. do some fixed income. You know, you can just spread your money around. At the end of the day, the weighted average that will come to mm. you. You know. Well, at the end of the day, you are not going to lose so much, even if there's a lot of volatility, because you spread your uh, money around. But it's very important that when you are considering investment, the goal is key. Are you trying to grow your funds? Now, if you go to maybe some investment outfit, there was the interest rate, 2%. The average one, you keep your money somewhere, or you leave it idle. Average is 2%. So why should I have less when I can have more? So let me go to where I will get 10%, 12%. Mm. If everybody wants more. You say, ah, the 12% is even small. Mm. But it's better than leaving your money I do. Mm. If the objective is I don't want too much risk, this money, I can't afford to tell myself stories. I'm getting married in one year time. I will use that money <laughs> for speculative activity. So I have to go into a space where I'm sure. I have a, a business partner that I'm supposed to give him money. It's not due yet. So why leave the money I do? Put it where you are sure that um, it starts to grow. It yes, it is safe grow. and it will grow. Absolutely. Even if it's small. Even if it's not so much. So bottom line, we should never go to banks anymore. <laughs> you will not want to answer that. I knew you would not want to answer that. The silence for me. <laughs> yes. but but you know we're looking at the advantages. Why do I even need to go to the bank? Even though you've said it subtly that you know these people have two percent and all that, it doesn't come to you anyway. They take your money more. Yeah, now, but bank charges. Yes. Yeah, so the the question uh, I think I asked this the last time is, anytime you want your money, can you just walk there, go, get your money? Okay. So let's go back to let's start. With or you tie my hands and say you've invested. No, 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 no. Let's go back to equities. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have invested in the stock of a firm, right, and you want your money, so that will take some time, a couple of days. Number one, you have to place that sell order. And of course, somebody has to pick and be interested. And then maybe within plus one, plus two, the money will hit your account, right? That's for the equity space. But you know that if I want to sell, you have to put it at the back of your mind. That anytime I'm here now, anytime I want, uh, I need money, I have to go through a procedure, a process to get my money back. That's for the equity side. On the fixed income side, there are some instruments you buy. They are tradable also in the market. So if you buy, for example, there's the savings, a federal government savings bond. Okay. There's, um, there's bond generally. If you are in that space, they are tradable in the secondary market. Even your treasury bill can ask your investment banker, your financial institution, I want to sell, I need money. They can go sell it for you and give you cash. Then if you are in the mutual fund space, some have um, a period of one day, 24 hours, to collect it, to get your money back, while some will tell you within 48 hours you get your money back. So you factor that in when there's a need for money. You know that after 24 hours, your money will hit your account, or after 48 hours maximum. Then you'll be able to assess your fund and do whatever. So for mutual funds, right, you can come in. They have their minimum holding period. Some are 30 days, some are 180 days, some are 90 days. Mm. Once you have exceeded that initial holding period, you can top up and, of, of course, you can redeem any time you want money. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's good to know. That's good to know. I mean, I need to start investing. That's <laughs> one of my goals in 2024 because it's not something I've, you know, With a lot of money. Yeah. Not with a lot of money. <laughs> you just said it. I have some money. Good money. Good money. <laughs> but uh, I personally, I, I, I'm always, when you tell me that, I'm like, no, I want to be seeing my money. I would rather put it under my pillow mm. and know that it is safe. But um, since you're saying that some of them, the principal is safe and then you still, you're still able to grow your money, I think that's good for people. So people can start to look at all of these opportunities. So you, need to you, you just mentioned something I'd, I'd like to know. Um, in a regular bank, there's a possibility that if you are the kind of person that wants to see the money and how it is performing, you can see it. Can you also see it when you're investing it? So are there tools that you have to have so that you know that, okay, the 50,000 I put, this month it has grown to this without yeah. necessarily coming to me? Maybe like an app or something that I can just always check. What do you need to okay, do? Okay, so 
for equities, right? Every day, at the end of the day, we see the closing prices of all the stock. Okay. So any stock that you are in, you'll be able to see, oh, I was yesterday it was 10 naira, today it's now 12 naira. And if you want to know what the worth of your investment is, you can punch your calculator mm. and say, okay, so currently I'm worth this. You see that, right? So for the mutual fund space, yes. So for, for example, the firm that I work for, we have an app that every day you see what um, earning you have earned, even if they say 10%, 11%, you know, interest accrue every day. Yeah. yeah. So every day you are able to go through your app and you are able to see what um, return and you can monitor and if there's anything you are not comfortable with you can call your relationship manager and say look i'm expecting this but this is what i'm seeing and if there's any explanation to be offered maybe the system glitch or something we're able to offer that explanation and everybody is happy yes you can. well i like that because yes, that yeah. now works for me as a person me that i want to see my so money your, your pillow is in your phone uh, <laughs> yeah so i'm i'm watching it this is where my money exactly. is mm -hmm. If, for instance, my money is, I'm calling you, yes. Mr. Onoja, <laughs> why is my money not performing as I thought? I had thought a client I... drop a WhatsApp message for me, 2 a.m. and read that. Look, yes, because I, I want this money. information. Uh, in fact, you even send me a screenshot that this is what I'm seeing. Is there any explanation for this? I yeah. can tell you that oh, we just paid you dividend yesterday, and that's why your position has dropped again. Mm. And he's happy. Oh, you have received some dividend. Oh, oh interesting. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Like I said, that should be at least most people's goals for 2024. You should start to look for um, how to invest this year. So don't just keep your money stash somewhere. Invest it so that you can start to get returns. And then you're planning for your future, not just your future, the future for your kids and generation to come. It's just like leaving a legacy. But that's where we're going to wrap it up here um, on the shore. So I want to thank you for coming. Our guest, Mr. Donatus Onoja. He is an investment banker and the fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. All right. That's the size of our show today. Um, we'll see you tomorrow again um, on The Breakfast. It's been a wonderful time, and I hope you enjoyed um, watching The Breakfast today. My name is Rumet Paulson. And I am Nyamgul Agaji. Let's do it again tomorrow. Bye for now. Bye.